Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about a couple of components used in a conversion. There are six main components used in a conversion. You got your battery pack, charger, motor, controller or inverter, DC to DC converter, and the adapter coupler. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about two of them. We're going to talk about the charger and the DC to DC converter. But we're not going to talk about them in general so much. We've done that before. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about some specific units, specific charger and specific DC to DC converter. So let's get into it. It's a 3.3 kilowatt charger. That's at 220 volts. It's 1600 watts or 1.6 kilowatts at 110 volts. So depending on your input, it will affect your, your, your output, of course. This is the charger we're talking about, just so you can see what it looks like. We're going to look at it more closely in a moment. But let's get a few of the little overview out of the way. It weighs 13 pounds. You saw me hold it up, but it's five and a half inches wide by 14 inches long by five inches tall. Input voltage range is 85 to 265 volts AC. Your input current is 16 amps. And the output range is 50 volts to 198 volts DC. Maximum output current, 32 amps and it has an auxiliary output that we're going to talk about in a moment. And according to the spec sheet, it's 12.5 volts, 5 amps. That's not what we've experienced. And, uh, and I'll talk about that in a moment. So let's take a look at what the charger comes with. So again, here's the charger. Bottom side. Top side one end and the other. So we've got some cables coming in and out of here. Uh, and we've got a heat sink and fan on top. This is uh, the AC input and the Anderson connector. This is the DC out. We'll talk about these in a moment. This is the cord they provide and you notice the maximum input was 16 amps so they can get away with this cord right here. They also provide the other side of your Anderson connector and a pigtail here. We'll talk about that in a moment. So typically what you're going to do is you're going to remove this plug because you're going to want to be able to have this thing compatible with, you know, uh, public charging. Now, you don't have to. You can plug this directly into a, 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 a short, heavy extension cord, one that's uh, appropriately rated. Or you can run this to your J1772 charge port. And now you can charge any public charging, uh, you know, level two charging. Now, if you notice, I'm, uh, I'm Northern California, so I'm talking about U.S. standards. So everything I talk about, you know, the 110, the 220, that's all U.S. standards. J1772, that's the level two uh, charge protocol standard in the US. 
we'll go to the whiteboard again and I'll, I'll show you the proper connection for, for, you know, doing this. So what you have is you have uh, a hot, a neutral, and a ground. And so let's go to the board and we'll talk about that. So this is an example of a J1772. And this is, we'll show you again on the whiteboard, but this is the, uh, the plug configuration. So we've got three larger pins, two on top and one on the bottom, and then two smaller pins. And what we have, this is the top. This is where your, your connector here, your latch is on top. That's going to fit just like that. Okay? So, the two pins on top, view it like this. This right one is line one. This is line two. And the bottom one is ground. Then you have the two little ones, the control wiring. The one on the right here is the proximity signal, and the one on the left is the pilot signal. So these, depending on manufacturer, are going to have different colored wires coming out the back, or you're going to have to wire your own, depending on how you purchase it. Back to our, our standard 110 plug. If we look at it this way, That's hot, this is neutral, and this is ground. These are the same size on this plug, but sometimes you'll see one has a larger prong on it. That's the neutral. So I'm bringing this up because this is a question we get as to what goes to what when we're going from this to this. Well, let me show you. Okay, so as you can see, line one will go to your hot, line two goes to the neutral, and of course ground goes to ground. It's that simple. So we talked about this being the ACN and the red and the black with the Anderson connector being the DC out. Then we have some other lines here, but this is the one that, um, that we typically use, and it goes with the little pigtail they provide here. And what it is, is there's three wires here. So the red goes to red and the black goes to black. What it is, is the red and the black are that 12 volt output. And typically we measure these at about 13.5 volts out, which is enough to charge your auxiliary battery. So that's the end of this. So we'll we connect this to the auxiliary battery. That then, when this is charging our traction pack, we're also maintaining our 12 volt auxiliary battery. And that's a, that's a nice feature. Then this 12 volt coming out of here, because this is attached to the red, so this is a 12 volt source. You don't have to use this 12 volt source, you can use another 12 volt source actually. But the way it's set up is that when you have this connected and this is on, you've got your 12 volts. And this allows you to have basically an enable circuit. And that plugs in here. And as long as you have 12 volts going in here, this will be on. You remove the 12 volts, it goes off. So you can interrupt this wire 
with, you know, a BMS or instrumentation or however you want to do it, and that gives you the ability to turn this thing on and off. Okay, so that's uh, the Elcon uh, UHF 3.3 kilowatt charger in a nutshell. Um, they're actually, you know, we, we've been uh, real pleased with them. Uh, we have not had any issues with them not operating correctly. You know, this is air cooled, so you want it located in a, in, a, in, a, in a position where it has plenty of air. Don't put it someplace that's, you know, confined and enclosed because if it gets too hot, it will thermally shut down. Now, let's take a look at the DC to DC converter. Talk about this Elcon DC to DC converter. We'll look at it more closely in a moment like we did with the charger. But first a little overview. It's the Elcon TDC-IY series. It's got an output of one kilowatt of power. Approximately five and a half pounds. <clears throat> Six and a quarter inches wide by 11 inches long by three inches tall. And the nominal input is from 72 volts nominal to 320 volts nominal and the nominal output is 14 volts so that's the overview let's take a little closer look at it now so the DC to DC converter that's the bottom the top fend, one end and the other. And so these come with voltage ranges. This particular one is um, inputs uh, 74 to 162 volts. And of course the output 14 volts, 72 amps. So what we have is we have a plug here and we have a pigtail here. We've got a terminal post here and a terminal post here. This is the DC out. This is the positive, the red, and right here, that's the ground. Comes with a little cover for the positive, like yay. And then it comes with a pigtail for both the input and for your control right here. So let's take a look at that real quick. So here's your, your input. It's locking, so it's kind of nice. So it just plugs into place push the lock. I mean, it, it locks in there pretty good without that, but that, that, because you have to push down to unlock it. But it's kind of a double lock, but that's your, your input from your traction pack and the output going to your auxiliary battery. And then this is for your enable circuit. And you, in, in order to turn this on you have to provide 12 volts to it. You just connect this to an ignition switched 12 volts. When this gets that 12 volt signal it turns on the DC to DC converter. Now we do fuse these on both the input and the output so you're protecting your DC to DC converter on both ends. So anyway, that kind of wraps up our little component discussion today. Just two common components, but these are common ones today. You know, a year from now, five years from now, you know, things are always changing. 
five years ago we weren't using these. They, they weren't available at that time. If my memory serves me correctly, I don't remember how long these have been out. I don't think they've been out five years, but anyway. That's why I bring it up, just because these are common ones that are being purchased now. And we do get questions uh, because it's limited documentation they provide. But they're nice little units. Um, we haven't had any failures with them. And, uh, and so, like I said, pretty common today. Priced right, that's one of the things we like about them. They're, 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 they're readily available and uh, they're not overly expensive and they do the job. So, appreciate your watching. Um, if you got anything out of this, give us a thumbs up and uh, we'd appreciate it if you subscribe. As I've mentioned before, 80% of our viewers are not subscribers. So let's switch that number around. I'd like to have 80% of our viewers subscribers. Then I don't have to work on the 20%. See you next time.